our first topic deals with unused openings, unused circuit breaker spaces. And the code tells us at 110.12 paren A that those type of openings have to be effectively closed. We have to use some type of a product that is identified, listed for that type of application. In other words, a piece of electrical tape over a unused raceway knockout in the top of a panel board is not effectively closed. And the code even talks about that whatever we do use there has to be substantially equivalent to the wall of the equipment. So in other words, whatever we use to seal up that opening has to be basically the same thickness of the wall of that, like a panel board or something like that. Where metallic plugs or plates are used with a non-metallic enclosure, they have to be recessed at least a quarter inch from the outer surface of that said enclosure as well. And all that information is found at 110.12a. On the left there, you'll see something substantial going into that box. I used to always call these push pennies uh, in the trade. Yeah. And uh, I kind of, it's kind of a funny what slang gets used quite a bit in the industry. But uh, on the right there, you've got a box where you're actually screwing a, a plug into that. And it's substantial. We're not... We're not taking a piece of, piece of gray duct tape and putting it around the box and in the box and saying that that hole's sealed. It, you know, it might be sealed, but it's not sealed at, as to how the code calls for it to be sealed. So, there's one, you know, that's in practice right there. The product that is identified for that particular type of application looks like we had a two inch nipple coming out of the back of that panel board. And for some reason, you know, it was decided to go a different direction, maybe a feeder coming in the top of that panel board or something. And so that two inch uh, hole in the back of that panel board, panel board cabinet there had to be sufficiently closed. And we have to use a product that is, has the same thickness as that, the wall of that particular panel board right there. And that's a proper application there cutting a piece of cardboard out and putting it on top of that with some electrical tape is not <laughs> suffice right here. You know, sometimes when I show this photo, I get asked about that right there. Does, does that hole right there need to be effectively closed? And, and the answer to that, of course, is no. That's a, that's a hole provided by the manufacturer for, for mounting that panel board on a, a wall surface mounted or something like that. The manufacturer also provides holes like this right here, where, you know, you see that equipment grounding, grounding electrode conductor coming through. And, and if we show the bottom of this cabinet, you'd see some weep holes in the bottom of that cabinet as well to allow for condensation and things like that to leak out of that panel board and not, you know, build up moisture in the bottom of that panel board. And all those are uh, holes provided by the manufacturer for a, a particular uh, situation. Some are there for heat dissipation. Yeah. Some of them are, are intentionally put there to allow for heat to dissipate out of the box and not build up in it. So for one to go and take a, a caulk gun and, and understand that, well, they told us to fill any hole here in this class, that's not what we're intending. Some of those are intentional by the manufacturer and, and should be left open. And when we get down to it, this is some of the, the we'll have a series of photos coming up here that uh, this is what can happen. Um, again, uh, wintertime, summertime, spring, things like that, animals usually have a need for either warmth. Sometimes they need a place to, to lay their eggs or or uh, just get out of the rain. And if you leave an opening there, they'll get up into that enclosure. If it's a bird or something, a mouse or something like that, uh, sometimes uh, the snakes will follow. They'll follow because they're in search of a, a quick meal. And uh, as you can tell, once they get up into that box and make contact with the grounded part of that box, as well as the energized lugs, uh, they become electrocuted and it's it's an absolute mess for not only the utility but the uh, installer that has to come out and fix that and we've got a couple of slides i added this morning where we'll talk about 
responsibility of who has responsibility for some of this equipment because the homeowner sometimes gets a little upset when uh, they have an issue like this and they find out that it's their responsibility to repair and not the utility companies. So this is another instance where, where a, um, a, a snake has gotten into the box, came up through the opening down there and, and into it. The utility had to respond to this and if there was substantial damage, they can't put the service back in into, um, can't put it back in service until an electrician comes in and makes changes to this. And it's all dependent on your utility company. Some utility companies may say it's their responsibility to uh, maintain that meter enclosure. A lot of them say it's the homeowner's responsibility and give you specifications as to what you even need to install there. So each AHJ, each jurisdiction is going to have to, to tell you who, who actually has control of the equipment there and, and is going to repair it or replace it. You can see that in this particular case, the snake got across the two phases there as well and caused some uh, some issues. 